What's good YouTube? You're back on S Motorsports. Today I got a project I've been waiting to do for quite some time. So like the thumbnail says, today I'm gonna be installing a big brake kit upgrade on the Trans Am, and I am super excited. This is a long time coming. I've been collecting parts for a while now. I mean, these factory brakes are pretty pitiful. I mean, look at all this room up there from the stock rotor and the tiny little brake. If we get a flashlight in there, you can see how much room there is in between my 18 inch wheels and the stock uh, caliper and rotor, which is just a single piston design. So what I got here is I got parts to do a C6 Z51 brake upgrade. I got brake pads, I got the C6 uh, rotors and, or I mean calipers and rotors. And then I have brake rotor that was machined down and it's actually the 1LE brake hub so it has the 1LE bearings which are slightly bigger. The first step is to get the car up on a jack stand, get the wheel uh, and tire off and then we can take a look at what we're working with and get start disassembling the old brake setup and modifying the spindle um, for our new components as there's a little bit of uh, fab work that we have to do to make this new brake setup work but it should be fairly straightforward. All right guys, so I got the wheel removed and we can see what we're working with a little better. So with my wheels, I do have to run a small spacer, which this is probably gonna work out pretty good with uh, the new setup as well, because as you can see, I still have a substantial amount of thread coming through um, on the nuts. And when we put the new rotor on, after we put the hubs on as well, that's gonna kick this hub out a quarter of an inch, the thickness of the new rotor. So that'll probably work out pretty good. But as you can see what we're working with, we're working with some pretty small rotors. This is a 10 and a half inch rotor, a single piston caliper, and really it's just not adequate enough for cars with a little bit more power. We're used to newer braking, uh, you know, very confident inspired braking where this definitely does not do that. You kind of have to lay into the brakes a little bit more to get it to stop. I mean, it stops fine, but it's definitely not uh, suitable for, you know, what I would call spirited driving. So the new setup, like I said, with C6, we're going from a 10 and a half inch rotor to a 13 and a half inch rotor. Um, and we're going from a single piston to a dual piston caliper, which is gonna be much improved braking uh, torque that the system is able, gonna be able to produce. Plus the pad um, should hopefully be a, a bigger pad to dissipate heat better. Uh, that helps with brake fade. Uh, it's all gonna help with brake fade. Um, and then just sheer clamping force. So I'm hoping with this setup, I get a really nice brake pedal feel where it's a very short throw and very firm, um, more like a modern car. So I'm excited to see what it feels like all said and done, but we're gonna be reusing the, uh, you know, call it stock line, cause I have a, a stainless steel braided line already. Um, and th these are actually all new components. As you can see, I got a ton of brake uh, pad left. Um, so these are all brand new components. They barely have any miles on them. As you can see, I mean, they're barely worn in. Um, so I will be selling these. If you guys are in Wisconsin somewhere, um, hit me up because I'm not gonna need these anymore. <laughs> so let's get the tripod set up and I'm gonna start disassembling this um, so we can start modifying the spindle. And I'll show you that as well because we do have to attach a bracket to the spindle to make the new calipers bolt up correctly. Uh -oh. 
So this is the brake that I got. It is a Rebestus brake rotor. And what it is, is a 1LE Camaro 1LE brake rotor slash hub. So this is a factory, uh, whatever, 91, 92 1LE brake hub. And so if I open this up, you can see it's got the hub as well as the rotor uh, attached because that's how, you know, Trans Am and Camaro uh, brakes are. So obviously that's not gonna work for what we need it for. We need to cut this rotor off of the center section because we just want the center section um, as this was hopefully a, a cheaper upgrade for myself to get the 1LE hub which has got the bigger bearings in it um, at a reduced price because I picked these up relatively inexpensive. Um, so we're basically gonna chop this off and then I got a, a cousin who hopefully can machine these down to the exact size that uh, I need to be able to fit the new uh, C6 big brake upgrade onto the Trans Am. So as you can see guys, we got the brake rotor and hub off of the uh, factory F-body brakes um, that are gonna come on the uh, 92 to, uh, 82 to 92 F-bodies. And what we need to do, we took the dust shield off as well and we need to drill and tap these holes right here for a larger uh, uh, bolt size um, to fit our new bracket that makes the C5, C6 brakes work. We're gonna be making a cut. We're gonna be chopping this section off and then this lower section off as well. And the bracket is drying right now, so I'll show you that in a little bit. But what we're gonna be doing is drilling the hole out um, with a 13, 30 seconds drill bit and then tapping it for an M12 1.75. And then, uh, then that's what these new bolts are that are gonna hold the bracket on, which is gonna hold the caliper on. So the bracket comes from Big Brake Upgrade and you need that to make this whole thing work. And you can get different brackets to work with uh, different style brakes. If you want the Brembo style, um, I chose to go the C5, C6 route as I think this rotor size is gonna be perfect for uh, what I'm trying to do. Uh, I wanted kind of the cheaper floating caliper design. Um, versus the Brembo's are a little bit more expensive. So we're gonna drill this out. We're probably gonna step it up. We're probably not gonna go straight for this size just to try and get it as perfectly straight as we can. Um, and then we'll chop this off as well um, for these new uh, bolts. And there are different sizes, so I gotta see which one goes where um, when I get the bracket, you know, what looks like the right one because uh, this one, Looks like it's not gonna go all the way through and this one will. So uh, we'll just make sure we got enough thread engagement. This is the bracket you need. This bracket is from Big Break Upgrade and it comes with hardware. And what we need to do is drill and tap these two holes for this larger hardware. And it came with two different uh, length bolts you can see. Um, I'm probably gonna use the shorter bolt for the upper mount. Um, just for the fact of then I don't have to drill that quite as far. So we'll, we'll see, but uh, it looks like it would still have, you know, good and thread engagement either way, but I, I'm probably gonna use the slightly shorter bolt for up here. So I'm probably gonna step up the drill bit size here and work up to this, but um, let's get to that. All right guys, so next is we gotta tap it with the 12 millimeter by uh, 1.75. So I'll try, you try and do it as straight as possible as you're starting. That's probably the most crucial part. So let's get to it. And I am using tapping cutting fluid as well. And you basically wanna back the tap out, go in, back the tap out, try and get as much shavings as you can out as you're doing this.
All right guys, so I got both holes tapped, took a little bit, and then as a check, I took the uh, shorter bolt, as that's the one I'm gonna run in the upper hole. Um, I measured it out using uh, my caliper, making sure I had the right depth, um, and I went, you know, just over an inch, like one inch and 30 thousandths deep on uh, the hole. And then using the shorter bolt, I thread it in as far as it could go and then measured the gap. And I'm at like just under a quarter inch for a gap and the plate is like almost a half inch thick. So that's making sure that it won't bottom out before uh, it clamps down. So we're good to go there. So the next step is gonna be holding the bracket up and we gotta trim off these parts of the spindle. All right, now we gotta mount this on and torque it to, to spec. I didn't get a sheet from Big Break Upgrade, so I looked for an M12 and 10.9 bolt, roughly 78 foot-pounds is the number I'm gonna use, and I'm gonna use some red Loctite on the threads as well to make sure this doesn't uh, back out because that would be a bad day. All right, guys, so we got the bracket bolted on and I got the wheel hub, and I did have to end up putting in some new uh, wheel studs. They're slightly longer. Not much, it should be enough though, hopefully. This is the part number that I used. Got them off Amazon, put a link in the description. All the stuff that I use will have the link in the description, obviously. Um, but uh, So now we're at the point where we gotta uh, pack the bearings which are right here, and these are the part numbers. These are the 1LE bearings, or they should be. And then we'll put a new seal on the back here, and then we can get the hub on, and then we can actually just try fitting the brake and the rotor, and that's the fun part. So let's get this all assembled, and then let's see how it looks. We're getting close. All right guys, so I got everything assembled. We got the bracket tightened down. We have the hub on bearings tight. So let's throw the new rotor on and then mock up the cal caliper to see what it's gonna look like. All right, let's grab this massive rotor. Look at how big that is. Oh my God. Let's put this on and see what it's gonna look like. This is gonna look awesome here. Da, 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 da. Oh, oh man. <laughs> oh, that looks so much bigger. Ah, oh, yeah, that looks good. So let's check. Let's see, now that we got that on here, I'm curious to see our thread engagement. Oh yeah, that looks, that should be fine. That looks about perfect, actually. Let me grab the caliper bracket. All right, let's see how this is gonna fit. We'll just mock this in for now. That's gonna look good. Let's mock in the caliper. Oh yeah, that looks good. Look at that. Oh, that is, <laughs> that is so much beefier than the old stuff. Holy cow, that's... That's gotta stop better. And uh, I will throw the pads in here. I kinda wanna get this buttoned up and then I'll button everything up. But man, does that look good. And 
I got a special surprise for right here. Maybe we should put that on now while we're waiting. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, damn, guys. That looks good. Look at that. Trans Am, baby. Nah, that looks good. I So I kind of went with the black color calipers because I figured red would have been kind of kind of weird because it would have been a little bit different red color. Ah, I just didn't think that would look that good. And I knew I wanted to do some lettering on there. So I think the black looks really, I think that looks classy with the black wheels. Um, a little bit more of a stealth look, but oh man, that, that turned out really good. That looks awesome. So I turned the steering wheel and torqued the caliper bracket mounting bolts um, to 125 foot pounds. That's what I found online. Um, so you definitely, it definitely helps if you turn the wheel um, to tighten those up. Next, I'm gonna put the brake pads in, uh, which I chose to go with the Power Strap Extreme Z28 carbon fiber ceramic pads. And I did this because uh, the previous pads that I had on this were Hawk pads, which I think they worked pretty good. Um, I, obviously, I didn't uh, drive on them a whole lot because there's a ton left, but it, it seemed like they had good bite and everything, but they did produce quite a bit of dust. So um, upgrading the brakes, now I'll have a little bit more stopping power, or that's the plan. Um, I figured I can go with more of a, a ceramic brake pad to cut down on that dust. Um, and still get the stopping power. So excited to see how these work once we're up and driving. And in the brake pads, um, when you open it up, they tell you how to break them in as you gotta burnish the brake pads in um, before they get the maximum uh, stopping power. So you did get some brake lube in here, which I did lube up the pins before I put that in. You get the hardware um, and then obviously the brake pads themselves. Oh man, that looks good. All right, now we gotta torque these bolts to 23 foot-pounds. I also got this, which is uh, basically a th really thin wrench to help hold on to this right here. Um, otherwise, other wrenches can be too thick. Um, I thought I needed it. Looks like I probably wouldn't. I could get away with a regular one, but um, let's see how good this thing works. Oh, doesn't work too good. It's the wrong size. Nice. Nice. All right, I got the uh, wheel adapter all torqued up. I torqued these. These are M, what, 12s? So those are 100 foot pounds. These are going to be M14s. So these are going to be uh, like 140 foot pounds, I believe. Um, and then I do use a little black blue Loctite on those bolts. And then also to make this hub adapter work um, with my spindle and my wheels, I needed to get uh, a new set of ring adapters, which are 74.1 uh, OD and 70.6 millimeter ID. And that slips on to the uh, little bit of a pilot um, that the rotor is on. And then that pilots the uh, adapter. And then the wheel is uh, tapered lug nuts so that, you know, basically self-centers. So your situation might be a little different depending on what wheels you have. It's looking good. Um, I got um, the brake line attached. I kind of have it midway. Let's see if I can get a shot of that. If we get a shot of the brake line, you can see I have it kind of midway down, kind of pointing back. I turn the wheel both ways. It looks like that should clear. That kind of gives me the right amount of slack. Um, I'm gonna double check it once um, the wheel is on and the tire goes up. 
Damn guys, that looks good. It's filling up the wheel a lot better. Obviously it looks way better when you're standing back looking at it. Um, you know, I have 18 inch wheels, so I have a decent amount of room. Still a good gap. Definitely can fit my fingers in between the wheel and, uh, and the caliper, no problem. So, and I have lots of gap here, obviously with the spacer. So not an issue at all. And oh man, that looks so good. That looks so much better than the stock. Let's go over and take a look at the other side and see what the stock looks like. Ooh, yeah. Look at that gap, that's hilarious. These things are so tiny. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't even look like I have a brake in here. Oh man, that's funny. Yeah, these weren't doing nothing. All right guys, so I got the driver's side done and the passenger side, it's gonna be the same process. So I'm gonna quick burn through that. I'm gonna turn the car around because I don't really have much room to work on that side, but I'll get the car turned around. We'll, I'll knock out the other side get the brakes bled as I haven't, I didn't do it on this one because I wanted to do the other side first and then this one as that one's farther away. So I'll get all that taken care of and I'll meet back up with you in a few seconds and hopefully we can take the car on for a drive and see the difference because I'm guessing it's gonna be a lot better. That's it for today. If you 
you guys like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.